I'm uh, Rosie Thornburr and I'm Principal Heritage Advisor for HMS Victory. And my name is Catherine and I'm a PhD research student jointly funded by the National Museum of the Royal Navy and Cranfield University. My name's Emma and I'm a conservation technician and also an apprentice conservator um, at the NMR site in Hartlepool. Do you mind um, telling me what made you choose this career? It sort of chose me, I think. Um, <laughs> I, was, I studied archaeology at university and then I got into studying and looking at historic buildings and then I got involved with historic ships. So I did product design uh, all the way through school and into A-levels, so that's design technology, which is the T. Uh, I did have to check that. <laughs> um, so doing product design for me meant that I built up my practical skills for those full seven years at school, and it means that I'm really dexterous, I'm really good with tools and materials, so for me that was really crucial to me getting my job as a conservator. Yeah, I actually started out doing a degree in history, um, so about as far away from STEM as possible. Um, but then I started to work in museums through that and sort of got into the idea of, you know, being able to get really close to the object, um, but also not just kind of look at them like you might look at an object when you come into a museum, but look at it and really understand it and then work to sort of make sure that that object is still there for a visitor now in the same way that it will be then in 50 and 100 years time. You mentioned STEM, um, so what does that actually mean? Um, so STEM is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. So it's all to do with kind of the subjects around those things that you might start to study in school, but you might also get into later on. STEM is relevant to everything uh, in the world now, particularly in a changing climate. I think that it's um, relevant to everybody's lives and important for people to get involved. Um, if you want to, you know, have a career that makes a difference in the world, they're really important subjects about using science to explain history and learn more about it. So I think it's a really fascinating use um, of scientific techniques. Um, to me personally, maths is quite an intimidating subject. So I was wondering if it's a key skill that I would need to pursue a career in STEM. I wasn't very good at school at maths or science, yeah. um, but I find the first hand uh, it's kind of seeing the physics behind everything firsthand really interesting. You, you don't necessarily have to be good at maths and things like that in order to do well. I am not very good at statistics mm -hmm. and that seems to be one of the main things but the moment you have a reason for the statistics it does become a lot easier to understand. I think pick the subjects that you already enjoy. I think if you enjoy a subject you're far more likely to persevere with it so like don't just do physics because you've been told it's a useful thing you know if you prefer biology or chemistry do those equally like if you're more practical go down the design and technology route um, but I think just do what you enjoy. So did you personally have to overcome any obstacles to get where you are today? Uh, so I'm dyslexic and dyspraxic and so my dyslexia got diagnosed at university as it often does and uh, luckily I was able to get some help when I was there uh, to sort of get me through my degree. Um, so I do find writing really really difficult but the benefit of conservation is that we don't have to do a lot of really in-depth writing unless you want to but I can just do <laughs> the writing that I'm comfortable with so... I'm maybe one of like not many women in this particular field, like, especially in archaeology and on construction sites, but I don't think it's held me back as such. So I think it's been positive to, to get more women involved in, in the whole environment and showing the other workers that, that we're just like the same, basically. If you consider time as an obstacle, I think uh, when I was uh, doing A-levels, there really wasn't a whole lot of advice on careers and what you could do with those subjects at the time. Um, so it took me a while to find my way to where I am now. Um, I think if you can seek out advice and opportunities in different places, you'll, you'll get where you're going a lot faster. You've just got to understand that although you might have failed something at school with a lot of hard work, you can still get somewhere. Um, so. It wasn't easy for me to get this job at all. Um, I tried for years and I had to do lots of volunteering, lots of different jobs that I didn't enjoy so much to be able to get here. Um, but I still wanted a career with kind of a STEM background. So I just carried on and here I am. I think and I hope there will be a lot more opportunities for women and girls to um, 
study STEM subjects and to get into those careers that use those subjects. Um, it's, some, it's certainly something we advocate for here um, and we do create opportunities. We have a lot of female members in our team now. We do still find um, that there are some careers, particularly in engineering, that are still male dominated, but I think with more female students coming through, things are changing.